Hello all my truth seekers, my name is Keisha and welcome to the truth show. In this video I'll discuss the Rothschild family's dark violet history. Did you know they were instrumental in forming and growing the Caucasian Jewish community that exists today? Oh yes. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. To impart my message in Revelation, I must provide a brief history of the Rothschild family. I will be telling their history in a story format. Once upon a time, in the bustling streets of the 18th century, Frankfurt, Germany, a man named Mayor Amstel Rothschild. He was no ordinary man and a core factor to the German landgraves of Hesse Kassel. But Mayor Hemschko had grander ambitions than merely serving the nobility. Oh yes. He dreamed of creating a legacy that would span continents and generations to come. Hemschko established his banking business discreetly, navigating the complex world of finance. His house amply named Rothschild became a hub for financial dealings. Oh yes. Unlike other court factors, Mayor Hamschko was cunning. He didn't squander his wealth, but carefully preserved it for the future. Mayor Hamschko had five sons, each with unique talents. Nathan Mayor Rothschild in London, the cunning one, he was a master at the stock market. No one could resist him. James Mayor de Rothschild in Paris, the elegant one. He walks through high society, securing powerful connections. Everyone wanted to be in his circle. Amschel Mayor Rothschild in Frankfurt, the malicious one. He managed the family's affairs at home. Solomon Mayor Rothschild in Vienna, the diplomatic one. He brokered deals across borders. No one can make a deal like him. Carl Mayor Rothschild in Naples, the adventurous one. He explored new territories for business. He was always looking to expand. Hey, my truth seekers, did you know that I have a blog? A blog that I post personally selected stories onto. I also have an online journal where I give you a peek at my personal life and more. So please go to the truthshowchannel.blog. All the links are below. The Rothschild's son expanded their banking operations across Europe and their influence reached royal courts, governments, and trading houses. They financed wars, built railways, and lent money to kings. Their wealth grew exponentially, and they became the most affluent family in the world. You see, they created many allies, and they only cared about money. The Rothschild family was driven by money and power. Those are the only things they care about. The Rothschild were ennobled in the Holy Roman Empire and the United Kingdom. Their coats of arms adorned palaces. Their interests diversified vineyards, mines, and even philanthropy. They were patrons of the arts and sciences. Whatever they could get their hands on, they wanted it. Great wealth came whispers. Conspiracy theories sprouted like weeds. Some claimed they controlled governments with all their money and power. They did. Now other whispers of secret societies, Freemasonry, KKK, Bohemian Grove, with all their money, sick desires followed. Anti-Semitism tainted their legacy. They put work into booting up being the false descendants of Jews slash Jesus. 
and the newly created land they created to validate it. Not to mention the money they invested into many presidents' campaigns to ensure the secret stays a secret. You keep my secret, I continue making it. Today, the Rothschild name echoes through time. Their wealth waned, but their legacy remains. Their wealth amount is unknown and sometimes fabricated because many of their allies and dealings are useless and or dead. The war in Israel determines the outcome of their empire. The war with Ukraine determines the power and dominance of white supremacy, not to mention the actual race slash ethnicity of Europeans. Something many ancient places and lands in that country try to hide. The Rothschilds are more than bankers. They are symbols of ambition, intrigued, and delicate dance between fortune and fate. They think they are gods. And so, dear listeners, the Rothschild saga continues. A tale of gold and power and the indomitable spirit of five sons who shape the world. Talk about family legacy and working hard. Something that many families of all races are missing. Guess what, my truth seekers? Did you know that you can get exclusive commercial free videos on my Patreon? I post my viral and block YouTube videos on there and more and stories that I wrote. You know, I write stories, people. Oh, yes. I post them on there. I'm going to start doing my video diary on there pretty soon. <laughs> Yeah, I need to communicate with my truth seekers. They are lifesavers. I love you all. Oh, okay, I'm supposed to be advertising my Patreon. The link is below. Now let's get scandalous. The Rothschild family, one of modern history, most famous European banking dynasties, has been the subject of various conspiracy theories. Here are some of the most notable conspiracy theories associated with the Rothschild family. Number one, control of global financial institutions. Conspiracy theories have claimed that the Rothschild control global financial institutions through wealth. The Rothschilds will work always together. That will be your power. Just how rich and powerful is Lord Evelyn Rothschild? Historically, the Rothschild family wealth was hidden in underground vaults. The Rothschild secret financial records were never audited and never accounted for. Their family commissioned biographies give the illusion that their family fortune has dwindled, but researchers estimate their wealth at close to $500 trillion, more than half the wealth of the entire world. Besides their many castles, palace mansions, wineries, racehorses and exotic resorts, the Rothschilds bought Reuters in the 1800s. Reuters then bought the Associated Press, which selects and delivers the same news stories to the entire world, day after day. They have controlling interest in three major television networks and easily avoid media attention since they own it. Until recently, they owned and operated England's Royal Mint and continue to be the gold agent for the Bank of England, which they also direct. They control the LBMA, London Bullion Market Association, where 30 to 42 million ounces of gold worth over 11 billion dollars are traded daily. The Rothschilds earn millions weekly just on transaction fees alone. They also fix the world price of gold on a daily basis and profit from its ups and downs. Over the centuries, the Rothschilds have amassed trillions of dollars worth of gold bullion in their subterranean vaults and have cornered the world's gold supply. They own controlling interest in the world's largest oil company, Royal Dutch Shell. They operate phony charities and offshore banking services where the wealth of the black nobility and the Vatican is hidden in secret accounts at Rothschild Swiss banks, trusts and holding companies. Although Evelyn Rothschild looks like a harmless gray-haired old man, make no mistake about it, Rothschild and his ancestors have hand-picked presidents, crashed stock markets, bankrupted nations, orchestrated wars, 
and sponsor the mass murder and impoverishment of millions. The Rothschilds who work always together, that will be your power. Weather manipulations. Some theories suggest that the Rothschilds have the power to manipulate the weather. Again, there is no factual basis for such claims. Or later, it is. If you had a bunch of chemicals and you built a tower, could you make it rain? No. Well, that's, that's the subject of tonight's weird weather. In the early 1900s, there was a gentleman who said he could make it rain. Charles M. Hatfield. Well, he said for $50, he could deliver. Well, Los Angeles farmers said, we need rain. Will you make it rain? He did. And they were so happy, they paid him $100. Well, there was a lake in the area, Lake Hemet. He said for $4,000, he could deliver four inches of rain. So he made this tower and he mixed up some chemicals. Guess what? 11 inches of rain fell and it rose 22 feet. Operators say it was the best bargain they'd ever had. There was another area that needed it. San Diego City contracted him to fill Lake Marina in one year. If he did it, $10,000. If not, he didn't get a penny. January 1st, he put his towers up and started sending his chemicals away. January 5th, it began to rain. January 10th, heavy rain came, kept going. And by January 15th, it had been a downpour for nearly five days. Okay, so the rain did come, and apparently it was Hatfield that was doing it. But look what happened after that. On the 19th, Marina Reservoir filled. The 26th, record-breaking rains were still falling, and the next day, dams were rupturing, huge amounts of water pouring out of the mountains, heading into San Diego. Twenty people lost their lives. Thirty-five inches of rain. Shame that's come about in the last two, three years is there probably isn't a child over the age of six that isn't deeply concerned about I mean, there were reports in the past, but now the focus of the world are on those problems, whether it's droughts, whether it's storms, whether it's the seaside being ruined, just undermining life. Everything. And, and in a way, has slightly, I'm afraid, eclipsed the importance of this conversation. No one's saying it isn't incredibly devastating, but actually we do need to think long term about the planet. Yeah, I and mean, it's a distraction, well, more distraction, it's a tragedy, but so it does have that knock-on effect. A billionaire friend of mine, who's a legitimate billionaire, mm -hmm. told me that it's entirely possible that some of these guys are trillionaires, some of these Middle Eastern guys. He's like, you've never seen wealth like this. It's, it's insane. In, do you know in the United Arab Emirates, they make it rain every week? Once a week, they make it rain. I mean, they seed the clouds. Really? They make it rain. Yeah, because they're in the desert. And they're like, eh, I don't like this. I like it to rain. So they fucking put all that shit that they have to put into the sky to make it rain, which they've been doing forever, cloud seeding, but insanely expensive. But they do it once a week. So 52 times a year it rains there. Involvement in wars and conflicts. The Rothschild have been blamed for starting wars for personal gain. For instance, a widely circulated but false account claims that Nathan Rothschild profited immensely from the Battle of Waterloo by receiving early news of Napoleon defeat. Oh, yes. Frankfurt, Germany. Fifty years after the Bank of England opened its doors, a goldsmith named Amschel Moses Bauer opened a coin shop, a counting house, in 1743. And over the door, he placed a sign depicting a Roman eagle on a red shield. The shop became known as the Red Shield Firm, or in German, Rothschild. When his son, Amschel Meyer Bauer, inherited the business, he decided to change his name to Rothschild. Amschel soon learned that loaning money to governments and kings was more profitable than loaning to private individuals. Not only were the loans bigger, but they were secured by the nation's taxes. Mayor Rothschild had five sons. He trained them all in the skills of money creation, then sent them out to the major capitals of Europe to open branch offices of the family banking business. His first son, Amschel Mayer, stayed in Frankfurt to mine the hometown bank. His second son, Solomon, was sent to Vienna. His third son, Nathan, was clearly the most clever. 
He was sent to London at age 21 in 1798, a hundred years after the founding of the Bank of England. His fourth son, Carl, went to Naples, and his fifth son, Jacob, went to Paris. In 1785, Mayor Amschel moved his entire family to this larger house, a five-story dwelling he shared with the Schiff family. This house was known as the Green Shield. The Rothschilds and the Schiffs would play a central role in the rest of European financial history and in that of the United States. Holocaust funding allegations. There have been unfounded allegations that the Rothschild funded the Holocaust. These claims are not supported by historical evidence, however. A TikTok saying that the Holocaust was a lie showed up on my For You page. I'm not even going to question why, how it came on my For You page. The question I have is, why does it have so many likes? Like, was there really like hundreds of thousands of people that was looking at this and be like, yeah, th this guy is cooking. Like, what? Assassination of U.S. Presidents. Some conspiracy theories even suggest that the Rothschilds were involved in assassinating of U.S. President, one of being Kennedy. Today we're going to get into the babushka lady who was seen filming the assassination of JFK on the day of his assassination in Dealey Plaza, Dallas, Texas. Now this lady's important because she's the only woman seen continuing to stand up as shots rang out. Everyone is seen running in opposite directions or hitting the ground. She remains poised, continues taking pictures of the assassination. The FBI said that they looked for her for years and could never find the identity of this woman. But we don't fuck around here, we like to do people's jobs for them since they're so terrible at them, so here we fucking go. That lady is none other than Philippine Rothschild of the Rothschild family. If we're not familiar, they own 80% of the world's wealth and have been starting wars for hundreds of years and overthrowing them. Not surprising to find a Rothschild with a front row seat that the FBI says that they could not locate, knowing damn well she was protected by four CIA agents right here in the picture. Spotted here with David Morales, Gary Hemming, and Luxian Kunin, all CIA agents. What do you guys think? Drop a comment, share it, it really does help. And thanks for watching FG. To sum it up, the Rothschilds have dabbled in many things, the Holocaust, the building of today's Jewish community, and starting an entire island of their kind of Jewish people. They also manipulated weather through the minding of gold or the news media. Another episode of It's Always the British Empire's Fault. And I usually talk about African history on this page, but today I'm going to talk about Israel and Palestine, and it's not the origins you think. And as I always say, origins always matter because origins help you understand why things are happening today. Let's get started and learn something new. This letter behind me is called the Balfour Declaration, and it was written by the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary, Arthur Balfour, in 1917. Now, there's been some debate over the years, but most historians agree that this is the core component that indirectly led to the emergence of Israel and the conflict between Israel and Palestine. Now, this letter was written to Lionel Rothschild, a figurehead of the British Jewish community. And this short 67 word letter had a seismic effect on Palestine that is felt to this day. It committed the British government to the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and to facilitating the achievement of this object. Then the British Empire created a mandate in 1923 and it lasted until 1948. During that period, the British facilitated mass Jewish immigration. Many of the new residents were fleeing from in Europe, and they also faced protests and strikes. Palestinians were alarmed by the country's changing demographics and British confiscation of their lands to be handed over to Jewish settlers. And because of the British Empire, this is what happened to Palestinian land over the years. And one more thing. 
And it wasn't until 2017 when the UK government acknowledged its responsibility. Now keep those words in mind, acknowledged its responsibility. And the only reason they acknowledged it is because an e-petition that was launched on the official website of the British Parliament attracted nearly 14,000 signatures by British nationals in just a few weeks because they were bound to respond to the petition because it managed to pass the benchmark for an official response. The never sorry government responded 10 days later, only to confirm that it will not extend any apology over the Balfour pledge. No oopsie, no my bad, nothing. They said, oh, um, I guess we should have called for the protection of political rights of the non-Jewish communities in Palestine, particularly the right to self-determination, but said that lasting peace must now be established through a two-state solution. <laughs> I hope you learned something new. Family, look at this. State of Israel is born. Look at the date of the news article. Sunday, May 18, 1948, Jerusalem. Before, it was Palestine, the green one, and then it turned into white Israel. And again, a very old map with Palestine. And another one, the Palestinians say that they are the victim and the land is theirs. And the Jews say that it's theirs. You see, this woman family, she was one of the first people that went to Israel, and this is what she has to say. And we went from Italy to Palestine. It was not Israel yet, it was Palestine. Yeah. What, how did you get, you went by boat? By boat. Was we went Israel? to Israel when Israel was not Israel yet. Yeah. Then... What caught my eye is this date, 1945. If we grab the news article, we will see preparation for air raids Palestine. The date is 31st of January 1931. Family, does this mean that the war already started before 1931? This means that they have been under attack since 1931 going back. And right now they are going to take it even a step further. What do you think family? Unlock hidden knowledge over here, link in bio. this up because as I said this is an uh, original document from 1829 and here is the article I'll read it to you now Jerusalem there is a report that the Rothschilds have purchased Jerusalem we see nothing improbable that in the pecuniary distress of the Sultan he should sell some part of his dominions to preserve the rest or that the Rothschilds should purchase the ancient capital of their nation they are wealthy beyond desire, perhaps even avarice, and so situated is quite reasonable to suppose that they may seek something else to gratify their ambitions that shall produce most important effects. If secured in the possession, and which may be brought about by money, they might instantly, as it were, gather a large nation together, soon to become capable of defending itself and having a wonderful influence over the commerce and the conditions of the East, rendering Judea, again, the place of a deposit of the large portion of the wealth of the ancient world. To the Sultan, the contrary is of no great value, but in the hands of the Jews, directed by such men as the Rothschilds, what might it not become? And in a short period of time, the Sultan is in great difficulty. Baron Rothschild was proceeding to Constantinople, and a second rebuilding of the temple is not among some of the most strange things expected in these strange times by some of the Jews. So there you have it, folks. The Rothschilds purchased Jerusalem, and as has been confirmed in this recent interview, they also formed the nation of Israel as we know it today. heard of the uh, Rothschilds. I was surfing the net and stumbled upon this video regarding that powerful family. And look what it says. Jacob Rothschild. My family created Israel. The question that triggers my mind is, how did they? And if you're as curious as me, you're going to watch that video. Don't forget to leave a comment. Is this the real Illuminati? And he doesn't look too pleasant, does he? He kind of reminds me of Queen Elizabeth. Just a little bit. To speak with the fourth Lord Rothschild about the Balfour Declaration, what it means for Britain, 
for the Jewish people and the Rothschild family. The Foreign Office, November the 2nd, 1917. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you, on behalf of His Majesty's Government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the Cabinet. So it's possibly the most famous letter in modern Jewish history, and it begins with three words. Dear Lord Rothschild, why was it that this letter was sent by the Foreign Secretary to your great uncle Walter? It's an interesting question because he was really interested in ornithology, <laughs> although he became interested in Zionism. I think the uh, reason was this, that it was primarily a movement from Eastern Europe, but they didn't clarify who was in charge of that movement and in addition it was after all in Great Britain so they felt that the Rothschild family um, should be the one to whom it was addressed with that said it is essential to approach such conspiracy theories critically and rely on verified information rather than baseless claims which is what I gave you. However, the Rothschild family historical wealth and influence have made them a target for these unfounded narratives, but it's crucial to separate fact from fiction. If you like to explore further, you can read more about the origins of anti-Semitic claims against the Rothschild in a 19th century political pamphlet called Historia Efedante et Cruciate de Rothschild Lia Rod de Sajufos by Dresse Daranavelli under the Synodium Satan in 1846. I can go on and on, but I think you all get the picture. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye. Here's a brief word from my sponsor. The world's falling apart. Every day, another shocking headline makes you wonder what tomorrow will bring. That's why those who know what's coming are using today to prepare. I'm talking about getting your family some high quality emergency food from My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply is a nation's leading preparedness company. They've been in business for going on 14 years now, and they've served millions of American families. Now they want to help you by giving you $50 off their popular four week emergency food kit. Oh, yes. You get four weeks of food per person with meals designed to give you more than 2,000 calories a day. By the way, this food stays fresh up to 25 years in proper storage, so it will be there when you need it. Other food goes bad first, you know what I mean? So don't wait. Go to prepare with my link with the truth and claim your four-week emergency food kit. You will save $50 per kit if you act now. So prepare with me at preparewithtruth.com.